do when we look to New York and look at the very different Dada culture from which the French draft dodger, Marcel Duchamp, spelled D-U-C-H-A-M-P, first emerged. But at the same time as his contemporaries in Germany were making politically pointed images about the Weimar Republic, about this, again, new forming um, government, and new forming culture, uh, that Duchamp would be making mustache Mona Lisa's. And not just mustache Mona Lisa's, as in his uh, uh, LHOOQ of 1919, uh, a work that is so much meant to be known by its acronym as much as it's meant to be known by your pronunciation in the French of that acronym, uh, that the letters L-H-O-O-Q when pronounced in French in that manner, uh, basically encourage you to read it, uh, le o -O uh, basically she has a hot ass, <laughs> is what that juxtaposition of uh, letters means. It's kind of like O-U-A-1-2. It's stupid, it's a juvenile pun, uh, but juvenile puns in the hands of Marcel Duchamp go quite a long way, especially as far as his interest in applying that kind of sensibility and that kind of comedy to the supposedly very serious realm of the high art that he so often referenced. Um, but do the difference of Duchamp's Dada, I mean seriously, an ocean apart, from the Dada of Germany uh, represents what I've already suggested is the real diversity of the Dada world, even as Duchamp, no less than his German contemporaries, was in America because of his own desire to dodge the draft. But his far less politically charged work focused its parody, focused its irony on the art world as opposed to the political world in ways that would wind up being no less influential, arguably even more so in the long run, than his German contemporaries for some of the reasons that we'll be discussing. And for this we have to step back a bit and again talk about Duchamp's own efforts to avoid the draft, uh, leading him to America from Paris, much to the consternation of his family. He actually lost brothers to World War I, even his sisters volunteered for the war effort. And so his family were actually mortified that he wound up leaving not just France, but leaving Europe to get away from the war, where he wound up descending in New York uh, shortly before this photograph here was taken to make a new home for himself. But his reasons for choosing New York weren't simply because they put him an ocean away from the fighting, at a time, I should add, when the United States itself was not involved in World War I. America didn't get involved until about halfway through the war. So uh, Duchamp, at least uh, when he initially chose the United States, was choosing, again, a neutral country. But Duchamp was interested in America for a different kind of neutrality as well. A neutrality, again, that spoke more to issues of art than to issues of politics, as he would discover when he first exhibited one of his landmark paintings, very early, obviously futurist-inspired work, called New Descending a Staircase, which was painted in 1912 in Paris but which significantly was selected by the American organizers of a really landmark modern art exhibition that would become known as the Armory Show in 1913. The show we're going to talk a lot more about next class period when we get into American modernism as much as we get into surrealism. But the Armory Show would be a blockbuster exhibition of modernist art that was organized by three curators, essentially, who were themselves artists, in an effort to do well, what they hoped would be introduce American audiences to the isms, to this, again, splintered and diverse art world that we've already come to know since Impressionism, but which, at this point, American audiences still were totally unfamiliar with. As we'll discuss in this class period, Impressionism was suspicious in 1913 to most American artists and collectors. So as you can imagine, futurism was beyond the pale. And Duchamp's work was actually one of the most modern works that was incorporated in the show. Now, 
because of this fact, and again, because of the vast differences between the European and the American art worlds, as you can imagine, American audiences not only didn't know what to do with some of the more modern examples of painting in the Armory Show, but Duchamp stood out because of the extremity of its modernism and experimentation. In fact, this is pretty typical of a lot of the ways in which the painting was downright skewered by American critics when it debuted, uh, as you can see in this comic from the New York Sun where they uh, transform the classical theme of his nude into the rude on the New York subway system. Uh, but what's fascinating about Duchamp is that rather than be offended by his work being singling out as the most ridiculous, as the most absurd of the work that was uh, selected for the Armory Show, uh, Duchamp, as we will discover characteristically, saw something else, a blank slate. And from his perspective, America was a different kind of blank slate. One whose blank slate was historical as opposed to necessarily political. And so it would be on this level that Duchamp would wind up engaging with not just the American art world, but transforming Dada into a very different animal, which is where we're going to pick up when we get back. When we come back, we're going to finish Dada, as well as get into surrealism, and talk about how it is that these twin movements are going to in turn be interpreted back in the United States, where guys like Duchamp are creating such a buzz. So, see you guys on Thursday? To be continued. Finally, get back to America. We haven't seen it since Aikens. Although it hasn't changed much. <laughs>